So, uh, two lessons. The first one is los adjetivos y los pronombres demostrativos. So that's demonstrative pronouns and adjectives. And then the second one is the relative pronoun que, which we're going to talk about today. So let's work our way through this first one. Uh, well, first of all, let's do a little bit of regular grammar review. What is an adjective? Somebody tell me. What is an adjective? It's an easy answer. Good, a word des that describes something. And that something is what? A, a noun, right, okay. So we've got uh, adjectives and pronouns. What is the difference between a noun and a pronoun? So an adjective describes a noun. What does a pronoun do? A pronoun is a noun. It is a noun, but it's a noun that refers to another noun. So if I want to say Jackson wears a mask, Jackson is the is a noun, so Jackson is the subject, right? I could say he wears a mask. So the word he is a noun, but it's a pronoun because it's referring to another noun. Now that other noun, Jackson, is not in the sentence, right? It's just he wears a mask, but it is a pronoun. Okay, so demonstrative adjectives and demonstrative pronouns do similar things, but we're gonna refer to them as different because they function differently. The demonstrative adjective is describing another noun in the sentence, and a demonstrative noun is taking the place of the noun in the sentence. So let's look at the adjectives first. Demonstrative adjectives precede nouns. Now why would it say that? In Spanish, adjectives come before or after the noun? Do uh, adjectives come before or after the noun in Spanish? Before. They come after. So, for example, the blue door would be la puerta azul, not la azul puerta. So it's actually backwards from English. In English, we say the blue door instead of the door blue, but in Spanish, la puerta azul, the blue door. Uh, so adjectives generally, most of the time, are going to come after the noun, which is why they clarify that demonstrative adjectives come before the noun. So in this case, the adjective, the demonstrative adjective, will always come before the noun, not after, like normal adjectives. So demonstrative adjectives precede nouns, and they must agree in gender and number, which is just like all adjectives. All adjectives have to agree in gender and number. So if we're going to say the red door, it could not be la puerta rojo, it has to be la puerta roja, right? And if it was the doors, las puertas rojas, plural. So the adjective rojo has to change gender and number depending on what the noun is. And these are no different. So these also have to agree in gender and number with the nouns they modify. Now, we're talking about demonstrative adjectives, but what are demonstrative adjectives? Like in English, what would they be? Anyone know? There's four. They are the words for this, that, these, and those. And in English, this, that, these, and those are four different words, and they're uh, singular and plural, right? This and that are singular. This refers to something near me that I am holding, like this mug. And that refers to something that I don't have in my possession, like that water bottle. Okay, so one is near, one is far away. In Spanish, there are six, and it's because they have the same as English, this, that, these, and those. So the difference between close and far, and then singular and plural, this and that, and then these and those. However, they differentiate between um, that and those as near, 
but not in my position and far away that over there so if I'm talking to um, uh, Nick and I say uh, Nick give me that that book I would say ese libro that book but if I'm talking to Nick and I say that book over there on Braden's table then I would not say ese libro which means that book I would say aquel libro so ese and aquel both mean that but aquel actually means that something over there so it adds the extra idea of the over there so we have the words for this and these which are este and estos, esta and estas. Why are there four words when there's only two in English? This and these. Why are there four in Spanish? Well, we have two in English because it's plural too. This and these is singular and plural. So why are there four in, English, in Spanish? Because of what? Right, the gender. So in Spanish, they have to differentiate between gender, which we don't do in English. Okay. Uh, este is masculine, and estos is masculine. And then esta is feminine, and estas is feminine. And then they're singular and plural. Okay, now the word for that is ese, and esos, esa, and esas. And then that over there for masculine singular is aquel, aquel abrigo, or aquellos abrigos. Notice the L, you say it at the end, aquel. But then when there's two, you don't say aquelos, you say aquellos. The two L's make a Y sound. Aquella and aquellas. All right, so demonstrative pronouns as opposed to demonstrative adjectives, which is, these are adjectives above because they are not taking the place of a noun. They are modifying, they are um, refer, like um, describing the nouns, which are pantalón, camiseta, vestido, cartera, and those other words. Now, when these words function as a demonstrative pronoun, some things change. Demonstrative pronouns take the place of nouns. So now they're not describing the noun, they are functioning as the noun. They contain written accent marks, whereas the adjectives did not have any accent marks, and the stressed syllable in order to differentiate them from demonstrative adjectives. So how do you say, somebody tell me, the demonstrative adjective for this for for feminine singular, which word is that? So demonstrative adjective. We're looking at the adjectives, and I want to know which word is the word for this, and then which of the four words for the word for this is the feminine singular word for this? What word is that? Yes. Okay. Esta. Then esta. Then the accent mark is esta with an accent on the E, the accent mark. That would be the demonstrative pronoun. Okay. So make sure that you say them correctly and you include the accent mark. ¿Cuál corbata prefieres? Which tie do you prefer? Esta, esa, o aquella, aquella. This, that, or that over there. All right, so now let's move on to the pronoun. If Well, does anybody have any questions about those? Y'all understand? All right, so let's talk about the uh, pronombre relativo que, the relative pronoun que. So if we want to say, I have a friend, Say, tengo un amigo. I have a friend. But if you want to add a dependent sentence after that, then you would want to say, I have a friend that lives in Guatemala. So, he lives in Guatemala is an independent phrase, but you can make it 
a complex sentence by placing two independent sentences, independent clauses. I have a friend, he lives in Guatemala, and replacing the pronoun he with a relative pronoun K. So the he lives, he is the pronoun, the subject of this clause, he lives in Guatemala, and you're replacing he with a different pronoun, and that's the word K. So which means that, as in like that or who or which, one of those. Tengo un amigo que vive en Guatemala. I have a friend that lives in Guatemala. Or el señor se llama Marcos. Uh, the man is called Marcos. The man's name is Marcos. El señor que vende computadoras se llama Marcos. So it's taking two sentences. El señor se llama Marcos. The man's name is Marcos. And el señor vende computadoras. The man sells computers. Two different sentences and placing them together using the relative pronoun. El señor que vende computadoras se llama Marcos. The man that sells computers is called Marcos. So que without the accent, because what does the word que with an accent mean? Huh? Yes, that was you the other day, wasn't it, Anson? Good. So K without an accent means that. Or then, when it's used as a um, comparative adjective, is a relative pronoun. This word usually introduces a clause that refers or relates to the noun, which would be the subject in the sentence. K always, I'm sorry, K allows you to join two simple sentences like Tengo un amigo and El vive en Guatemala and join them into one complex sentence by turning one of the sentences into a dependent clause. So it's taking the second one, El vive en Guatemala, and changes it to that lives in Guatemala, which is a complete clause. It has a verb and it has everything it needs, but it's dependent on the first part. So that's what makes it a dependent clause. The relative pronoun que is equivalent to the English pronouns that or who or whom or which. While these words may be omitted in English, K is necessary in Spanish. So sometimes in English we could say something like, I buy the shirt that Manuel, I buy the shirt Manuel wants, but in Spanish you have to include the word that. So sometimes we eliminate those words, that, which, who, or whom, but in Spanish you always need to use the word K for this kind of sentence. Yo compro la camisa que Manuel quiere. All right, any questions? Raise your hand if you feel like you grasp both of these, the demonstrative adjective and pronouns and the relative pronoun. Okay. Can you raise your hand if you feel like, give me a, a on a scale of one to five, five being, I got it. It's I'm good. Four, three, four. Okay, good, good. And you guys are grasping it. Let's do some practice then. Uh, starting with activity four. Yeah. So fill in the blanks with a demonstrative adjective or a demonstrative pronoun, and be sure to use the correct form. So Maritza, oh, sorry, Julia says to Maritza, Maritza, ¿qué te parece? And then which word do we use for this in this in this sentence? ¿Qué te parece falda? Blank this falda. How do we translate that? Which word do we use for this? To answer that, we got to ask ourselves, which word is the word this referring to? Is the word that we want to put in there, the word for this, is it, re, is, it, is it modifying as an adjective? Is it modifying the words Maritza or que or te or parece or falda? Which word is the adjective describing? Which word in that sentence is the adjective this, the word for this? Which word in the sentence is it describing? Falda, exactly. And we know that because demonstrative adjectives always come before the noun they describe, right? So whatever noun comes after, whatever word comes after, that's that should be the noun. So how, now that we know falda is the word, which word do we use for this? Well, there's six options, right? 
you can do, I'm sorry, well, actually there's 12. Um, you've got este, estos, esta, or estas, or the next set of four. Ese, esos, esa, or esas, or the last one. Aquel, aquellos, aquella, or aquellas. Which set of three do we start with? Which one means this? First, second, or third set? The first, right. Okay, so now that we know it's the first set, that would be the word for this. Which of those words do we use for the word for this in this sentence to describe the word falda? Esa, correct. And why, Braden? You're right, it is esa. Did you say esa or esta? Esta, yeah, it is esta. And why? Remember the adjective esta is describing the word falda. So it's going to depend on falda. And what kind of word is falda? It's what? A noun, yes, but it's a, what gender, what number? Feminine, feminine and, singular. and singular. So then we would choose the feminine singular word for this, which is esta. So if you need to draw like a uh, an M and an F next to the words on the left side and an S and a P for singular and plural above the columns, then, the, then you can do that and it'll help you recognize um, which one is which for which adjective you need. So es como, that one over there, how do we say that one over there? Es como, it is like, es means it is, como means like, when there's no accent. So Maritza, que te parece blank falda, esta falda? And then is it's like that one over there. How do we say that one over there to refer to a falda? Hmm? Sorry, the mask, I can't hear you. Akoa? Akeya, yeah, it's an E. Yep, but that's right, Akeya. So Akeya, because it's feminine singular, and those are the words that refer to that over there. Good, so aquella que está al otro lado de los pantalones. It is like that one over there that is next to the pants, is what she's saying. Okay, any questions on the demonstrative adjectives and pronouns? All right. Let's turn the page. Well, let's do one for activity five. So combine las dos oraciones usando oh combine is in spanish actually combine combine las dos oraciones usando el pronombre relativo que so combine the two sentences using usando the pronoun relative the relative pronoun que so the first one let's look at the example modelo la blusa es bonita Y la blusa tiene mangas largas. So the two sentences are las, la blusa es bonita, the blouse is pretty, and la blusa tiene mangas largas, and the blouse has long sleeves. So how do we make that one sentence using the pronoun, relative pronoun? We take the first one, la blusa, and we say, well, there's an adjective in the first sentence. So we're going to put the adjective at the end. So we're going to say the blouse that has long sleeves La blusa que tiene mangas largas is pretty, es bonita. Let's do number one. La camisa es grande y la camisa tiene rayas rojas. So the shirt is large, la camisa es grande. And we want to say uh, the camisa with red rays, red lines, stripes. So, la camisa que tiene, the shirt that has rayas rojas, es grande. 
La camisa que tiene rayas rojas es grande, is large. You guys understand how to use the relative pronoun K with the sentences? All right, go ahead and work on these then. Those are your two homework assignments, just four and five. Um, you can finish those. And if you wanna work with a partner, then I'll let you guys do that. And then ask me if you have any questions and I'll be happy to help.